No, you're right here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Hey everyone, Tim here. And right now I'm in sunny San Diego at the WEC Method lab with my good friend Chris Chamberlain, who was the man who taught me the rope in the first place yeah, Tim. four years ago to the month in this very place. Oh man, yeah. all right. This is almost like an anniversary. I didn't realize that. Oh, all right. <laughs> Chris is the lead educator. He doesn't like the title, I don't think, but it, I think that's <laughs> a great way to sum up what he does here at WEC Method. He takes what David WEC discovers, invents, uh, finds, and helps make it translatable and teach it to, to us humans. Um, shall we get into it? Absolutely, yeah. man. Cool. Yeah, yeah. What's your no, uh, number five? Oh, we're going from five. So, yeah, so okay. My, my plan is like to do five to one. And I got we, each, it. we each share. I don't we're know what his five it. is. Yeah, he doesn't know what mine are. And just to see and just to see what we get. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, I guess my five, I kind mm -hmm. of am looking at it almost in a progressive way. So I, I did do that in my Ooh, head with okay. it a little bit. So yeah, yeah. it's that way for me. Great. And uh, that number five for me is actually the cardinal turn. It's cool. the thought process of it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a pattern specifically, but Great. it's the idea of transitioning from that like underhand to overhand, north to south, whatever that be for oh, you. So yeah. I, for me, that's like the most fundamental thing that I think you need to learn with a rope. And it's also, it's the first thing I teach somebody when I introduce them to the rope. And I think it honestly has the most power in that concept. It's I'm, the most beneficial thing you can mm. do with a rope. The biggest thing I think it does is it helps with somebody's orientation and space and it helps somebody learn how to shift their weight. And as a coach, as the educator here at WEC Method, yeah. I'm really just after weight transfer for people Yeah. because that generally will teach somebody how to side bend and coil is something we do here at WEC Method and yeah. that's a huge piece of the rope that I have always tried to get across in that practice for people. I think it's the most powerful thing you get from it. And it's the thing that like I do with my hundred year old grandma, but yeah. I also do with like professional fighters I work with downstairs. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's simple, but it's super powerful. Dude, that's background. great. And you beat that one. I know you, you may be like, <laughs> I, need, I need to re, re, re <laughs> you whole, lay it out. Tim. Yeah, mine are just patterns. You know, <laughs> that's cool. The yeah. patterns are yeah. awesome, but no. <laughs> I'm, I'm conceptual. Tim. Yeah, no, I, I love that. You've, you've broken the rules already in, in the best possible way. Um, Dang, so, sorry. So my number five, I, I call it home run. You might have a different name for it. Oh um, yeah, okay. But uh, oh, yeah, it's essentially it is it's almost that, but it's I'm kind of in this middle stance, but it's going from the overhand to the underhand. But it's just that hit that moment of that hip. Right there. Right yeah, there. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the moment. And I just like that what that does for the body. It teaches that <gasps> that coil that, that as that side lengthens this side shortens and comes through. Yeah. Yeah. So that so, I love that you call that the home run, right? Because yeah. in baseball, that idea of being in that front side coil first and drop into that back side Ooh. coil, that's the home run. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that makes a ton of sense. All right. I'll give no, you my next. Number four, go for it. Yeah. So the next one, um, it's kind of uh, I call it one, two, three, four matador. <laughs> yeah. That's what I got. Yeah. All right. And the idea is it's um, it's an I'll do it for the overhand pattern, and yep. it's an overhand race and chase yep. where you count four beats, and then on that fourth one or the fifth beat, I guess, yep. you turn it into a matador, in which then you bring it back to the overhand race and chase. Oh, okay. And the reason I like this is that we use the matador as an opportunity to change the lead hand, but when we do repetitive matadors, we tend to like, we'll tend to like, forget that it's even a lead hand drill. I think we just start thinking it's a matador, yeah. if you will. And uh, if we get in here and we get this one, two, three, four, mata door, then yeah. I go back in, okay. three, four, mata door. Oh, I change the lead hand yeah. and it allows me to get some volume or some repetition with my non-dominant hand as the lead mm. hand. Right? And the brain train in the count. Yeah, so you get that sort of like opposite side. Mm. And then you even have the play of exploring different stances with it too. That'll challenge the brain and the body and coordination. So nice. it kind of, it's the only drill I do still that I still feel like I get that like when I first started rolling, mm. where I got that like, oh God, like this feels so good. Like this is something <laughs> I need, but I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. Like, that, that drill is kind of like, because it puts me on that non-dominant lead for a little bit. It yeah. really makes me be like, oh, like I need this. Great. That's why I like that. Oh, yeah. I like it. And yeah. I do, those plays with the matador between like the figure eight and the matador, they're really nice to just break it up and it makes your brain work a bit as well. Absolutely, yeah. You get those lead hand switches. Man. I like it. So my number four was one, of, <laughs> I didn't realize there was a name for it when I named it. I call it Honeyman's Dance. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But I it's think uh, it. <laughs> alternating under, alternating sneaks? Sneaks. Is it just that? So just 
Yeah, yeah, you do the, the like the tandem or the tandem. Yeah, yeah. I think. and I just like the way. Yeah, like, it's the spiral. You do it so elegantly. It's, it, well, when you get the whole body involved, right? But it's the um, it's the spiral coming in that way. The whatever sneak that is down the rope, and then you're kind of catching it in. Th so it's this like yeah. both it's like sneaks. It's yeah, it's kind of teacup. Oh, true, yeah, <laughs> the teacup drill. Yeah. But it's just the integration of that pattern. Once you understand that, it's kind of that expression of oh, I got both both sneaks. I can do it on both sides at the same time, like alternating. And then what it, when you feel the like weight shift in the body, that heel lift and the, yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. it just feels like a really nice integrative pattern that's kind of, was a nice, it's a nice goal for people to get to, I think as well with the, with the rope flow. Oh, yeah, love Great. it, dude. No worries. Uh, what number do we got three. Next? Yeah, my number three, where did I go here? Ah, so it's back to matadors. I actually love the matador. I think it's the most powerful drill you can do with the rope, by the way, so. I'm, I'm with you on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm never gonna yeah. not, there's so many little nuances to it and, uh, one little one I like to play with right now uh, and I explore a lot is I do a, an overhand matador where on, I always take a split stance and we do backside coils and frontside coils is what we call it, where we're side bending over the front of the back. And I do one where I do a far steer with the rope over the front side yeah. and I do a near steer over the back side. So I just do that combination. So it's far steer matador, near steer matador. Yeah. Far steer oh, matador, near steer matador. Ah, and this nice. sort of plays in this role. This should help you start, if you're kind of high in your rope practice, like mm. you're getting it done with your hands a lot, and you're yeah. not quite commanding like weight shift yet in your training. When you do that far over the front leg, when your elbow goes high like that, it tends to make it so you can like drop your stance. You feel like you have a lot of space. It creates space for the knee to come yeah. up, which also means you can meet the knee. Mm. And then on the back side, that dropping of the elbow feels really natural yeah. on the back side because it's there. just like that home run a little bit. Yeah. I'm in the overhand on this one, but but it still has your body has that pathway it likes to go on. So for me it took me years I was doing the the what do you call it? Out, outside steer? Yeah, some people call it the out steer, far steer. Far steer yeah. yeah, I call it far steer. That's all I thought Matador was, and then I realized, I was, oh, there's this little, my elbow yeah. can come up there. The near, yeah, that, the near yeah. steer, yeah. The, big, the biggest thing is you always, you always recognize there's always another side to the thought process you're yeah. in. The mathematics of the rope. Is, yeah, is beautiful, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. Great, that was your three. That's um, my three, three. let's hear it, Dan. Yeah. Ooh, a bit off piste, one arm, not off piece that much, but one arm spiral pattern. So okay, just, yeah, just, right. It's essentially it's the the sneak, but just um, with the ah, hand. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. just that when it's like when I went through my one arm rope flow phase, it's just so nice. And you come back to it, right? It's just that like yeah. one, two, three, yeah, boom, and it's that like boom, boom, high boom. to low, and it's the feeling of the every motion is. Has a purpose there, right? I can see, yeah. Yeah. I feel I mean, like you really like wrist play with it. Yeah. Like I can sense that artistry in the wrist. Yeah. Right? And then you can, it gets to like, the, again, the full body can come into it. Yep. There. But it's just that feeling of like that, that three beat back. Doof, doof. There's just something about that that spiral in the shoulder that I really like. Yeah, too. I really love, I love the three beat thought process of yeah. that, Tim. I love little moments like that because they, they feel special. They I think do. that's why we'll gravitate yeah. to those little things where that little extra beat in there, it's like, yeah. ooh, I got to hold that. It, I had to do something special to hold it. Yeah. I had to change how I spiral through it. Yeah. But it let you keep your weight on one side a little longer, and then you switch through. And I think that's really the power of like a drill like that. So yeah. That was your three? I'm that four? three, number two right. or four, yeah. Oh, two, yeah, what were we calling it? Two and one, yeah, yeah, the countdown. Yeah, all right, so. Kind of conceptual, it is pattern. It's the overhand throw pattern. Yep. Uh, I love this one. I think it really demonstrates the power of how like the rope, the rope can be used if you kind of put your head into it and start seeing the, the blurring or the, like the blending of the different patterns. So this overhand throw pattern sort of learns like a matador and a dragon roll and like a, like a overhand sneak, some of the same mechanics from all three. Yeah. But it allows us to sort of put them all together and create a pattern that is very familiar, which happens to be something that would normally release from the body. Yeah. But because we can do it in repetition with a swinging tool, like that's super powerful to allow somebody that's on that path to like learn a, learn throwing mechanics. Yeah, and the balance, what I like about it is you've got the leg lift and everything ah. and it's like, it won't teach you the nuance of the spin of the ball, but it will teach the whole body how it can shift the weight. Yeah, yeah. Just, 
you can start like you can start feeling the pattern and the rope will get out of the way when it's right if it's not right it's in the way yeah. so yeah that's my number Love two that. my number two this is gonna this is kind of uh, i call it duck walk and i think you actually showed this to me first um, <laughs> All right. and it's it's essentially a way to do alternating underhand sneak ride, but with a, with walking involved. Okay, you call it duck walk? Yeah, well, because it's like that. that <laughs> oh, you get low, yeah. You yeah, get low, yeah, but, yeah. but without cool. the getting low, yeah. just, just the... I was like, what? You no, know, I like traveling drills with the rope, and I just think oh, that like... We're on the same page, too. Yeah. I love traveling drills yeah. with the rope. <laughs> that like, that counter twist, because when I try and teach people, naturally people want to do that. Can I see you do it one more time? Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah, if you don't mind. Without the... Oh yeah, all right, Tim. I like you, Tim. <laughs> uh, yeah. As a I've talked to, to a couple other rope coaches, and they'll they'll teach the under and sneak over the. See, I'm that's what I'm saying. Doing yeah. over the front, but counted. I do that one yes. that creates that rotation. That rotation. It gives you that sense to drop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love that one. It makes you feel like you're like moving through something. It's that counter, and that's more contralateral, right? So that yeah. relates to gate more. And I've had quite a bit of feedback from people that do wrestling that relate that to Oh, that, yo, that feel, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You kidding me? Yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know. Oh, dude, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah that, that said, wrestling, like to shoot, you're over the back side. Yeah. So that sense of coming through there makes yeah. a ton of, yeah, I love it. That's and great. It, it just feels good and you can like feel powerful and go forwards and it's that weight shift yeah. as well, but with that fully integrated, like that sneak pattern, all yeah. the hands and everything. I think that's Great. awesome, man. No am I back? Am I to my number one? This is Chris's number one. We got this the big This is my reveal. number one here, yeah. right? Yeah. Top five rope flow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris's number one. This is go. my like. This is my favorite thing to do right now. Yeah. I, I don't know. That's this fine. is not something you have to do. It's no. not even that crazy or anything. <laughs> but uh, it's a simple little twist on the sneak. I call it the sneak across. I sneak showed this across. to you, I think, the other day. Yeah. Um, it's the overhand sneak, and normally, like, I do the overhand sneak over that front leg. And in this one, what I do is I, I cross over the body and then I sneak out. Yeah. So it's normal sneak, I would be hitting this front side. Yeah. I'm gonna add that extra beat, boom, and come out, which kind of gets to that, uh, that thought process of like having those extra beats to, to hold that. on. Yeah. You sort of like, as your rope practice, I think, progresses like years mm. like you just start kind of looking for these little extra beats Where something's in places still happening and it yeah things are still moving it kind of lets you explore like a different body mechanic in yourself or a different weight shift a drop an mm. elevation whatever it be like a level yeah. change and it lets you stay someplace a little longer but still be accomplishing something mm. which is it's very satisfying to feel that and do it and feel connected to the whole thing and then have the out of what you normally do to get out of it type thing. yeah so. and it's kind of Looks like you're charging up as well. Like yeah, 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 yeah. I, I used it a lot when I was playing around with Olympic Fencer. We were looking for more opportunities and little routes to mm. hit that kind so of like feint. he. It's like yeah. a feint almost. Yeah, yeah. He gets to. He is obviously just in one hand here, so he has a lot more control and more play. But the rope became something he got to pla play with and navigate and feel a little more in charge of the movement when we were playing with stuff mm. like that. Oh, I played with a little little bit the other day. I'm gonna have to play with that more now. Oh yeah, definitely. yeah, yeah. yeah because it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it must be good. Like, it's it's definitely good. one. I just like when I like actually sit down and do like a or something like it always comes in there it pops yeah. up on its own so like it tells me i like it you i must guess be feeling something yeah so i'm yeah. feeling something there and i keep yeah. falling falling into the trap of it so yeah. if your body's feeling it and yeah. it likes it <laughs> yeah. yeah great cool man my number one oh let's hear it yeah you're like it's the same move <laughs> no no <laughs> that would be cool it that would have been epic so cool and yeah. then i worst. think you like it though really yeah. simple move yeah it is <laughs> I like the, that you went simple. The underhand matador. Man. Oh yeah, all right, what a guy. It just teaches that weight shift, but it's not, it's not that intense weight shift of like, it gives you a moment to go, right, okay, I'm here, okay. Like, it teaches you the weight shift, but you have time to wait so you can think about what you've just done or what you don't really think, but like you feel and yeah. then have a second and then you, before you go. Yeah. And it just gives that really, and I just think that's one of the biggest takeaways from rope is that understanding of balance from moving from one leg to the other yeah, yeah, and maintaining yeah. balance. And I think the underhand matador is just the, probably the most underappreciated move to help train that for people. So yeah, when, you when, get the beat, the extra you get the beat. beat. You yeah. get the extra beat that gives you time. So it's time. in that learning phase, it's time. And then as you're more advanced, it's patience. And I think just drilling that and then going for a walk or a run and feeling like it just is giving me some of the best sensations from a drill to like application to running. And mm. like, so I just think that as something I share with people is. Yeah, yeah. 
Cool. All right, that was solid. Awesome. Yeah, that was yeah. fun to do, man. <laughs> yeah, that was thank, good. thank you guys for watching. Hope you got something out of it. Check out WEC Method. Check out Chris on Instagram at Eroding Weakness. Yeah, and if else, I wear the rope.com. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Peace.